as you can see up in the uh, upper, should be in your upper left-hand corner of your screen, you're going to see recording. So we use the Zoom platform. That's what I'm using here. And I'm going to teach you about that. And then later on, John is going to talk about the GoToWebinar platform. They're two separate platforms. I prefer Zoom. I think John prefers GoToWebinar. And there are probably other programs out there, or platforms out there, that you would like even better. But I don't use those, and, and John doesn't use those. And this is, so this is just going to be a basic program for you. What can you do with Zoom? With Zoom, you can do video meetings, which really now is kind of timely for those of you who don't want to meet with your clients face-to-face -face or don't want to meet with people face-to-face. -face, you can log on to Zoom, have a, a meeting. You can see them. You can talk to them. You can visit with them. And if you think you'd perhaps like to learn a little bit about that, I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go along. And also, of course, you can do webinars with Zoom. So what are you going to learn today? You're going to learn how Zoom works, how to set up a meeting, how to set up a webinar, how to send out the invitations, which of course is important because if you don't invite people to your webinar, they're not going to show up. And then how to conduct the actual meeting or webinar, which is what we're doing here. Now this is a PowerPoint slide that I have created prior to today, and I'm using what's called the share screen mode of, of Zoom. Down at the bottom of my control panel, and, and if you're conducting a webinar, you see it'll say share screen, and I click on share screen, and you'll see me go through this, because I'm going to go through this for you in the most basic of form so that you can see me do it and see me set up a webinar and it's going to be recorded and so you'll be able to see that. So that's what you're going to get today from me. And that is that is me for those of you who don't know me. So we're going to stop sharing a screen and we're going to go into this a little bit. Let's start with, again, I'm going to go back to sharing screen because I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. I'm going to go to a internet page. I will log out of that. I'm going to go back into Zoom. So what you would do is you would go to your internet. You would type in, and this is live happening right here in front of your eyes. Let me get rid of those. If, if by the way, you do a, a, a webinar and you go live to your screen, watch out what your tabs are up here because people are going to find out what you've been looking at and some people might not like what you're looking at. All right. So you type in zoom.us. Click enter. Now it's going to take you to a little different page than what you have here because I already have an account but you will have an account at that point. And so well, download it. It's free to do meetings and we'll talk about meetings. It's free to do meetings, but webinars are going to cost you and almost every webinar platform charges you a monthly fee and those monthly fees vary. So let's go to my account. <clears throat> so this is what I see when I go to my account. Go in here and it's my profile, tells about me a little bit. And this is just telling me basically, it tells me that I have a capacity for meetings. I can have up to 200 people in one meeting. I can have up to 500 people in a webinar. And I think we had close to 200 and some odd people register for this web webinar today. It's my sign in email, my own personal page. I have a personal link because of the account I have in Zoom. I have my own personal link. You can do that if you want to uh, get in the pro. But let's talk about meetings. Let's take a minute here and look at it. You want to schedule a meeting. A meeting is different than a webinar. A meeting is where you get together with a group of people and all of their pictures sh show up in little boxes on the screen. And you can talk back and forth freely. So this is a great vehicle. I use it a lot with my clients. I use it with all of my coaching clients because I have coaching clients all over the country. I can't see them 
in person in order to coach them. So we do Zoom meetings and I get to actually see them and I see their reactions and they see my reactions. So right now I don't have any upcoming meetings on here on this one. So we're going to schedule a meeting. Click on schedule a meeting. What's the topic of our meeting? Well, we'll just, we'll call it Realtors. If I could type real well, I'd be king of the world. You can put a description in there. When do I want to have this meeting? Well, I want to have this meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock p.m. It's going to last an hour. It's not a recurring meeting. A recurring meeting means we're going to have it over and over again. So people, uh, I belong to the National Speakers Association with John. John is known in the National Speakers Association and around the world as the real estate tech guy. Uh, so if we had recurring meetings, which we do in the National Speakers Association, you'd click that, and that means that meeting comes up at the same time. We re require a registration. You all were required to register. That limits who can get into your meeting. Have meeting IDs, meeting password. If you want to have a meeting password, you can have one. You don't have to have one. The video here, is the host going to be on when you start? Are the participants going to be on when you start? Are they going to be off when you start? That just means when you come on in the meeting, um, your picture is going to show, the participants are going to show when they come on. You can control whether or not they come on or off. How can they get on? They can get on by telephone. They can get on by computer audio. They can get on by both. As you see, this is, is really, really simple. So you can enable them to join before the host. You're the host, all right? So they can come on. You have a meeting set at 2 o'clock. They can get in there before you, and then they just sit and wait for you to open it up or you can make them sort of be in a waiting room. A little um, legend comes up that says this meeting hasn't started yet. Mute participants upon entry. That means that when they first come on, they are not allowed to talk. And if you have a big meeting, that might not be a bad idea. You enable the waiting room. In other words, when they come in and it's before the meeting starts, they get that little message that says it hasn't started yet. Only authenticated users can join. That keeps people from just getting in there by getting the code some way from a friend or something. And record the meeting automatically, and you can record it on your local computer or in the cloud, depending on your particular program uh, or level of program. So that's meetings. Now, if you have questions as we go through here, uh, put them in the chat box. John? Yes. Let's see. Well, I'm looking here. For, we have a question here. Maybe try sharing options. Just so you know, we're watching and listening to you both. Yes, that's okay. You can, <laughs> you can watch and listen to us both. Uh, we're not doing anything secret. We're just having a little setup in the beginning here. So that's some questions. Can you mute audio? Uh, not sure I understand what you mean. Can you mute audio? Can, can I, in a, in a meeting, I can, can mute the other people, the host can mute everybody, if that's, uh, if that's your question. Can you add a chat box for a meeting? Yes, we have chat boxes here. That comes up automatically. You should have a chat box at the bottom of your screen because you're chatting, and those will show up on, on your meeting boxes. Hey, Wayne, I'll, take a, I'll keep an eye open for any questions, too. So if, if you have questions, feel free to type those in. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Um, all right, yeah, here's a uh, question over here. Will this be recorded? Yes, it will. Okay, so let's go back to share screen. And we'll go back to our... And you see, uh, here we are. We're back. We've just gone back now. We're sharing the screen in the, the Zoom platform. So let's go to webinars. And this is going to be simple. And again, it's being recorded, but just pay attention. So you can see here, these are upcoming webinars that I have scheduled. Uh, you can save your previous webinars. I don't know if I've got some saved or not. I generally delete them. Well, I say, <laughs> well, I say I generally delete them. I'll get around to that. Uh, and then you can have a webinar template. You can set up how you want your webinar to look every time. So what we see here today is our meeting today how to conduct your own webinar. Here's a webinar ID. So when John and I were getting this set up and, and uh, he had not been, uh, the program didn't 
as him as a panelist when he first came in, he logged back out using this webinar ID and he joined. Now, let me open this up for you. When we open this up, it gives us the same sort of material that you had before. So here's your topic, how to conduct your own webinar. You can put a description in there for people who, who want to know what it's about. You just type that in, it's a setup, and we're gonna we're gonna go actually set up a webinar here, but I want to see, I want you to see behind this one what what it takes to get this set up. So there's an alternative host, John, the business, John at Business Guy Tech. So the host and panelists are on the video when they come on. Audio, telephone and computer audio, dial from the United States of America. Webinar options. We have a Q&A option, so you can ask questions on this. You can actually do a practice session of your webinar. So you can set your webinar just like this one. You set it up and you go on and practice and it doesn't broadcast to anybody, but it, it does record and you can go back and watch it. So that's very helpful, especially for first time webinar presenters. There's, this is a no, almost a no risk proposition. You, you almost can't fail here. So enable HD video for screen and shared screen, only authenticated users again, make the webinar on demand and record the webinar automatically. I click no on that all the time. And the reason is when you first come on, if it starts recording, you've got all sorts of setup times and setup things going on. And, and um, later on when you play it back or your clients play it back, they don't want to see you getting your mic set up and, uh, all right, so I'm not sure if we got some of this on here. John, did it did did it go dead there for a while? Um, okay. Anyway, let's go on. Okay. So, so Donna had asked, and and I can explain that to her. She asked if. If you hold a meeting, is there a place where you can turn on the chat box? If you're doing a regular Zoom meeting, uh, that option should be available. Donna, sometimes you have to put your mouse over the Zoom screen and you'll see some options. So it could have been turned off by default. Sorry, is that on, the, uh, on the meeting screen, John? Uh, yes, on uh, just to allow chat chatting she she had mentioned she had done a zoom meeting today oh. and wondered if that was something she needed to turn on in advance okay well john it looks like i had a mic problem here um so i'm not sure what did we get into anything on webinars uh i've been able to hear you fine so okay okay i looked like my mic was was off but i i don't know for sure all right, so we're down to record webinar automatically. And as, as I was talking, you don't necessarily want to ha have that on. After you get set up, click your record button and then it'll start recording everything that's going on. So what do we have here? This is invitations and this is how you can invite panelists. As you can see from my cursor, I've invited John as a panelist. And over here, you edit that. You can add in anybody you want as add another panelist. The Will, will become panelists and that gives them the opportunity to, to speak during the webinar and to, to present and that's what John is going to do later on. Again, I have a webinar size of, of 500 attendees and this is the registration. So over here, now this is important. Click copy the invitation. You see this up here. Click copy the attendee invitation. That copies all of that to your clipboard, as you see right up here, copy to clipboard. You then go to your mail, move this, and go to your mail. And you send that in invitation. So we'll send that invitation to one of my other email addresses. If it loads, there we go. So I'll send that to and 
and subject webinar. And all you do is go down here, right click, paste, and there's your invitation. So when you get that invitation, of course, as you know, you click on the invitation and that's how your, your people get invitations. Now, you use that same invitation if you're, if you're using a, some sort of lead page, you stick that in there so that people can, can click on your invitation to, to come to your webinar. Does everybody understand that part? Any questions about that? Because that's important, all right? Okay, additional options here. Close the registration after the event date. You want, don't want people registering for your webinar after it's over. You can allow attendees to join from multiple devices. I have noticed on here that a number of you have joined from your computer and your phone. And you show social share buttons on the registration page. So we had 237 registrants automatically approved. And you can import these from, the, uh, from a CSV or view all of the attendees over here. Now, let's go to email settings. Again, important. So select your language. Uh, English, of course, is, is probably going to be your main language. Your email contact. And you edit that if you want to use a different email contact. You just fill it in there. Go back here, invitation email to panelists. So now I sent an invitation email to panelists, which was, which was John, and he got it. that's how he found out about it, and he logs in then as a panelist. This is a confirmation email uh, to registrants. You all got one. So you can send yourself a preview e email to see what it looks like. If you want to change the wording of it, you come in here put whatever you want. Thank you for registering for you. Just type in here anything you want. It all fills in here. You save it. You've got your own confirmation email. Now you all got a reminder, one hour, one day, one week before the webinar. So what do we do here? It asks you, you want to send a reminder email? Send a reminder email to approve registrants and panelists. When do you want to do it? I want to do it one hour before the webinar, start date and time. I want to do it one day before the webinar, start date and time, and one week before the webinar, start date and time. And all of you got those in your email. And I want to tell you that when you're doing a webinar, it's important to send those reminders. I have signed up for any number of webinars that I have then forgotten and not attended. Last is a follow-up email to attendees. Send one day after this scheduled end date. So I'm going to give you a preview of what you're going to get one day tomorrow. And say, hi, username. Thank you for attending How to Conduct Your Own Webinar. We hope you enjoyed our event. Please submit your questions or comments to Wayne at wayneshonberg.com. Now, I'd like to speak to that for a minute. Uh, quite frankly, uh, in the speaker business, we rely a lot on favorable comments from people who have been to our presentations or, or attended our webinars. And if you enjoyed this webinar, if you learned something from this webinar, then I'm going to ask you to send me some comment that I can use for other groups. Branding. You can upload a banner display, logo, uh, Anything you want. There's there's just all sorts of stuff in here. I don't use any of it. Uh, you can use a post webinar survey. Uh, I did not choose to do that. You can customize a short description. There's all just a whole lot of options. You can change the theme. You've got a, a, a header text. Upload your banner. The next one is polls. So you want to have a poll. You have created a poll for this meeting, poll comprehension, two questions. Make it anonymous. If you want to add a poll, go to here. So here it is. What's the title for your poll? The title for my poll is, oh, let's do this. What do you think? All right. So what's your question? You type your question in.
Let's make it multiple choice. Now you can make it single choice where people write in an answer, but let's make it multiple choice. Yes. No. And we'll save that poll. And we can add a question. We can have as many questions as we want in the polls. So now we've got two polls, okay? And polls are helpful. Polls are helpful for a lot of reasons. You can ask a lot of, uh, a lot of information that will really help you. So go over here to Q&A. We have a Q&A uh, box on this. It's con configured for the default settings. You don't, I, I never allow anonymous questions because it just uh, it makes me uncomfortable. I wanna know who's asking the question and why. So you allow attendees to view answered questions only or all questions. If you wanna let them upvote or, or attendees can comment, that's your option. Integration. I'm not going to go into integration. I think it's more than what we need right now. Uh, you've got instructions there. It's a, it's a whole different product. But this is kind of important. If you want to have, if I want to have this webinar on Facebook right now, all I have to do is click live and I, I can stream it on Facebook or YouTube or workplace. So those are options. And a lot of people do that. I don't do that on a webinar like this because it's frankly nobody else's business. So we have, that's this webinar and we're gonna get out of it. Go back to all webinars, I think. Yeah, here we go, all right. Now, in a minute, we'll set up a webinar our own. We'll stop share here for a minute. Have some other questions. Hi, James, how are you? <laughs> uh, all right. How are we doing, John, on other, other questions? We got any other questions out here? John? Sorry, let me unmute, oh. my, let me unmute my microphone. Okay, uh, well, that's all right. You scared me yeah, there. <laughs> no. Oh, so shit. we had a question from Sharon who asked about, it's a great question on, um, do you do the poll during the webinar or wait until you follow or your follow-up email? And actually, I think, and that's one of the things I'm going to discuss a little bit, Sharon, is being interactive during your webinar, the more you can set up polls, you can set up things for the participants to do, I think it helps keep them engaged with the webinar. So you can do that either way afterwards, but definitely I think it's good. I have a poll I'm going to give you during the webinar. So, well, um, let's, let's, let's do this, John. Yes. Uh, right at the bottom of my screen, it says polls and I click on that and it says launch polling. Yep. There you go. So there we go. So, okay. so, so you've got, you got some poll questions there. Oh, I can't vote, but you can't vote. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You can't vote. Yeah. You disenfranchised. And so another great question that came in is uh, what's the difference between a meeting and a webinar and meeting would be something you might want to do with your team or staff or on a smaller scale. Uh, I do a, a class every mon every other Monday with a group of real estate real estate instructors around the country, and there are ten of us on there, and we all share our screen and discuss talk and discuss. That is a, a good example for a meeting. But if you're planning to host something, uh, Donna Stone, for example, if you were planning to do an event for your board, a webinar would be more suited because with a meeting everyone actually can show their screen and unmute themselves correct Wayne but with a webinar you have more control over keeping the guest from interfering with the presentation I guess that's a great way or a good way to explain it I, uh, John I think uh, one of the best ways to explain it is is a webinar is when you are just trying to disseminate information like we're doing here and a meeting is when you want exchanges of, of ideas or information. Yeah, it's a great among, point. Among the group. Excellent. So, um, and I, I use both, as I say, with the coaching clients and, and uh, just uh, and with my law clients, if I don't want to go <laughs> go to the office on a, on a bad day, I'll call them up on Zoom and we can discuss it that way. Now you can sh share the results now and Wayne can, once he closes the poll, then we can Ready? see the results on the screen. Here we go. We're going to close the polling. If you haven't voted, you're out. Here we go. End polling. And it says share results. And there are the results. How confident are you that you can conduct your own webinar on Zoom? 
33% said very confident. Somewhat confident, 50%. I'm still not sure, 17%. And then do you think you'll attempt your own webinar? 73% yes, 2% no, 23% not sure, and 8% would like further instructions. So, so that's what you get in your webinar. Uh, you find out a lot of information. Uh, for instance, I, as I look here and we've got a somewhat confident and I'm still not sure, uh, put some questions in the chat box then. Yeah, John's here and, or you could do them in the Q&A. Uh, raise your hand. I'm going to shut the polling down here. We'll go to Q&A and see what we have. We've got at the onset of the meeting, how to contact your attendees to join. Well, uh, what we did, uh, and I'm not quite sure I understand your question, but when you set up your meeting, as I showed you before, and maybe you missed it, I'd be glad to go back and cover that again, but we're already at a half hour here. Um, you, you click an invitation, you copy an invitation and you email it to them and then they click on that and that that's how they get to your meeting. Now, James Deering asks, my desktop doesn't have a camera. What kind of brand would you recommend? May I assume that it automatically works on my phone? Uh, real estate tech guy? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to get to a couple of suggestions on some equipment. I have that in my, um, I have that in my, so I saw that Jim had asked that question. We'll cover that. And um, there were a couple other questions. How do you rotate from one presenter to another appearing on the screen or both? Uh, that's totally Wayne can and the host can set that up, whether we are in a gallery view, which I believe we are now, yeah. or if we want to, we could do this view or we could go just to one of us um, showing our view. So there you go. See, so yeah. and what's called the speaker view, then uh, John is on, John is on big on my screen and, and I'm small. Uh, we'll go back to the gallery view. It's the two of us. Uh, yeah. Double, double, double your your benefit here with John and I both on the screen at the same. You time. know, and the really great thing about Zoom is, and I use Zoom a lot. In fact, I use Zoom now more than I do go to webinar. But I had a pro, I had a tech question yesterday. The tech guy had a, had a tech problem, and uh, it was for a, kind of a complicated situation. So I I got a hold of the company through chat because they had no phone number. Some of these tech, these companies we use for services. And I just chatted with the person and I said, I, I just need some help. Well, that person sent me a Zoom invite. We got on a Zoom meeting and I actually was let him take control of my um, screen. He was able to look at my screen and go in and maneuver around and show me what to do and solve the problem just like that. So. Um, there's several other questions that came up here, Wayne. I'll take a quick look. Can you share your screen on a meeting or just a webinar? You can do both. You can even, as I just mentioned, allow uh, Wayne can, he's going to let me share my screen in a moment, or I could let Wayne take control of my screen. And then uh, how do you rotate? We talk, that's kind of automatic that's in there. And we are recording this, so you will be able to watch that. Um, and the free version, someone wanted to know about time limit, Wayne. Wayne and I both have a Zoom account through the National Speakers Association, but there's a, a free version and it's what, 40 or 50 minutes, Wayne, an hour? I think 40 minutes, uh, yeah. 40 minutes with, with uh, one person or two persons, I think. Right. And uh, well, I've done some, there, me yeah, I've done some meetings and uh, we ran out of time. We all just called right back in. So yeah. it's I want to tell Ronnie Barrett that, uh, yes, it is Chuck Berry behind me. I was his attorney for 20 years. Yeah. For John Smith says 40 minutes and I thought it was 40 minutes. Thank you, John. Um, yeah. And the, the other really neat thing we do with the council of real estate brokerage managers, when I do courses with the, with the account I have and Wayne has, we can have breakout rooms. So we could do a training course and put you in groups so that you, uh, you could work amongst yourselves and share your screen and do some things. Uh, we're back to a, sh a screen share here. You asked about, somebody asked about plans and pricing. So here we go. 
see the basic, it's free, sign up, it's free, host 100 participants, uh, unlimited one-to-one -one meetings, 40 minute limits on group meetings. Let's see if it says here, uh, how big your group is 40 minutes with three or more total participants, that's limited to 40 minutes. Unlimited number of meetings, online support, and you can go to this page yourself. Again, zoom.us slash pricing. For pro, great for small teams, $14.99 a month, and that's where you get into being able to have webinars. So it's all right there on their, on their page. I'm going to go back to... And I've uh, used I've used the free version for several years, and it worked seamlessly for me. The only reason I moved to the bigger version is that I I dropped my go to webinar and moved everything over to Zoom, and it was simply because of the uh, discounted price I was able to get through the National Speakers Association. That's the same with me, John. I used the free version for a long time, and then once they made it uh, so attractive. It's hard to, hard to get, <laughs> not do it. Um, so I'm going to, uh, uh, for you right now, I'm going to schedule a webinar. Show you how easy it is. We'll call it test webinar. I'm not going to put a description in there. When do I want to do it? I want to do it tomorrow. I want to do it at four. 30. Now, I don't want it to be an hour. I just want it to be 30 minutes. Is it a recurring webinar? No. Registration required? No. Required webinar password? No. Host on, panelist on. You can both, audio both. You can do q and I'm going to enable a practice session. Only authenticated users can join? Yes. We'll enable HD video for and here you go. And boom, I have scheduled a webinar. Now, go back to my webinars. There it is. I open it up. Get down to those things about my email settings, my invitations, my polls, all of the things that we talked about are right there for you. So that's how easy it is to conduct a webinar on Zoom. Um, I'm going to stop the share screen here. Uh, I want to talk about a couple more things. So I guess we'll let's, and then we're, I'm going to turn it over to John here, but I want to, I want to show you things I promised I'd show you. Whiteboard. You go to share screen. The whiteboard is automatically up there when you open your Zoom. So as a host, it's there. So here's your whiteboard. What is a whiteboard? Well, I can do anything I want in there. I, I, I want to put text in there. I text in there. Well, if I could type, I'd be, so I can move that around, make it bigger, make my text box bigger. I want to spotlight it, hit the spotlight, point things out. I want to stamp it, little arrow by it, heart, lots of hearts, and Thankfully, we have an eraser. The eraser just takes everything away. What else? Format. Uh, you know, change colors. Well, let's see. I've got to go to draw. And so there's my purple now, and I can draw. If I could draw, you can write. And you want to undo it, undo it, undo it. Clear it all, clear all drawings. So again, there's your, your whiteboard, which I promised I'd show you how to use. I, I mean, this is so easy. Uh, it's, it's just uh, unbelievable. I, now, I think, can you, can you share the screen and show us how it looks from your perspective and the different screen options? Um, I don't think I can. I don't think I can give you how it looks from my perspective. What I'm seeing, I mean, I'll tell you what I'm seeing now. I'm seeing a picture of me and a picture of John. Right. And I took some screenshots of what I'm going to show you from GoToWebinar because when you do log in as the presenter, sometimes trying to do screenshots and different things is 
it's very challenging to show what other people are could see on the other end. But okay. Now, if you have any questions, any more questions about Zoom, you can either put them in here, and we'll try to take care of them. If I were doing a PowerPoint presentation, going to be done with both meeting and webinar. Yes. Now, Wayne, did you close the poll? Because I had someone ask. I don't know if it's still showing. Uh, I did close the poll, but let me see if we can open it again. Or, Here it is. Oh. Can you see it? I can't. I cannot see it now, but let's see here. But you might, um, when you close it, maybe that will close it. Uh, well, I've got it. It's, it's showing again. Let me do it one more time. Can you see it now? Uh, no, I cannot see it now. Huh, it says sharing poll results. Uh, can viewers see it? Anybody? Each attendee can open, close the poll themselves. Okay, so that's, yeah. Because yeah. I closed mine earlier. Maybe that's why uh, I can't see it. Okay, all right. Okay, that's why, okay. All right. Um, if you have any further questions on Zoom, you can email me directly and I'll be glad to, to take the time. We'll set up a Zoom meeting and I will spend the time with you to, to go over it again, even though we've gone through this in, in the webinar. I don't mind. This is, um, this is something I do because, and right now you, you, you need this anyway. I mean, you can't get out among anybody or you're not supposed to. So uh, if you wanna know more about Zoom, email me, you have my email address. I'm gonna turn this over to John now and he can talk about go to webinar. Okay. So I am going to share my screen now. And pull up my PowerPoint. I just have a, a few PowerPoint slides I want to go over with you. I'm going to share some tools and some other things. Uh, I've been doing webinars since really back in 2008 when go to webinar first launched. And I got in with a GoToWebinar subscription where I could have 10,000 attendees and I don't, it was a ridiculous. I paid 30 something dollars a month and they, they could never get me out of that clause and finally, uh, finally they sold the company and something came up and they raised my price. So I ended up going with Zoom, but I've been doing GoToWebinar for years. They're both very good programs and platforms but I always want to remind people, you know, when you're doing a webinar, it's, it's a performance and you're on stage and you need to be uh, as prepared as possible. We can, we could present to a group of people live and it's, it's easy for us to get feedback on how are they thinking, you know, what are they thinking about our presentation? What are the looks of their faces? But when you're doing a webinar, there's so much distraction going on. I mean, my phone's been, People are text, texting me and other things that are going on. And so I just want you to, to remind yourself, you've got to get creative on a webinar and you have to do some interesting things. And uh, we're going to look at GoToWebinar. I'm going to go through a few quick um, uh, slides for GoToWebinar, similar to what Wayne did, just to give you an example. GoToWebinar has made some very huge advancements and they're more similar to Zoom. Personally, I think GoToWebinar is much easier to use than Zoom, only because sharing your screen and some other things. However, Zoom has much more functions as Wayne, Wayne showed you with the, um, the whiteboard. I can actually, with sharing my screen here, I can go up here and and, and I can annotate. So I'm going to actually bring out the uh, spotlight and so that you can see this and we'll kind of move through the, the uh, PowerPoint here. And I, that's, this is one of the things in, uh, in um, uh, Zoom or in, in GoToWebinar that I don't like. You have, every time you want to advance your PowerPoint slide, you have to go out of the annotation tools or it's a little bit uh, challenging. But you would go in, and I'll just go through some of these slides very quickly. You want to set up a meeting. You schedule a meeting. It's up in the top right-hand corner. You can see here that you can do a live meeting. They also allow you to do a recorded meeting, which is kind of interesting. 
There is an upgraded fee for that, but there are other solutions out there. I use a company called EverWebinar, and I can upload a meeting there and actually run the meeting, and I've done this before many times, and uh, people have no idea that the meeting is, is recorded. Now, I always give a disclaimer, this meeting's been recorded, but it's a great way if you, for example, had someone that you wanted to do a recruiting, if you're a broker and you wanted to do a recruiting night, or perhaps you wanted to do a home buyers webinar, which I've done several of those, you could put that on your website. People could click on the link, I wanna sign up for this webinar, and through ever webinar or such as the recorded webinar, it actually brings a box up that says, would you like to watch yesterday's webinar? And if they click on that, you've captured their email, their name, and now they can go right in and watch this webinar and you're off working with another buyer or doing another listing appointment. And you've got a client that's actually watching a webinar on how to buy or sell a home or perhaps someone to, to uh, come to work for your company. Same real principles Wayne went over and I won't spend a lot of time, but you can see here that uh, through here, you basically can go in, set up the date and time, you can brand the webinar, and then you'll see right here, and I'm gonna just go up here so I can get the annotation and I'll do the spotlight. Right here is the link. Now, I'm gonna kind of get high tech on you here, but it's not high tech. Sometimes I set up webinars if they're free and you could have, if you wanted to send this where people could sign up for the webinar, you could go to GoDaddy and register a very inexpensive domain name for 10 or $11 for a full year. For example, um, you know, chatwithwayne.com and then he could just give that link out when he wants to set up a meeting with someone and they would come right to this landing page and set up the meeting or be able to attend the webinar. So I've, I've done some interesting things like um, how to get a VA loan.com and that's the web link I use in my advertising. So when consumers see that they go to that web address, it brings them right to this landing page. So again, just get creative. Then they would come to your landing page. Uh, I do use Canva to set up my logos and graphics for my landing pages. I think it's good to do. And then at this point, you can just, uh, you're ready to go. There's things here that you can add, such as uh, right down here at the bottom, you can engage your audience with surveys, polls. We've already talked about that. But you can also go outside of, um, you can also go outside of Zoom. So I, I hope, can you see the poll on your screen now? Or are you still seeing my I, I don't. I don't see a poll, Dan. Okay, so that this is one of the other unique things that Zoom has. When you share your screen, because I was in my PowerPoint, you actually couldn't see that screen but now I, so you kind of have to go in and out of, out of windows. That's why I think GoToWebinar is a little bit easier to use. But if you would go to, and you can use your mobile phone, go to, or, or, or your computer, menti.com, and use the code 939374, you can now have people that would, can type and if you if someone types something in we'll get these will pop up on the screen they should and I usually always tell my my one one and only joke I know many of you've heard me tell that joke that I normally do at the beginning <laughs> is uh, when my wife and I were going to Searcy Arkansas and I thought it was pronounced CRC and she said it's Searcy like sir and the, and the young guy behind the counter said, Dairy Queen, real slow. Uh, anyway, sometimes technology does weird things. So don't, you know, don't get confused. But did anyone type in? I'm going to just see if I need to read. Let's 
So I haven't seen anything come up yet. But if you want to use an outside source like this, what's neat about this is you can actually get people to type in comments and they come up in real time. But I'm not seeing anyone that wants to do that. So that's okay. Oh, there we go. How to win a listing. Good. Thank you. So as people would be typing these in, they would pop up on the screen. You can use that in your presentation. So again, I just want to mention that I always think it's good if you can share, if you can share polls and do some different things that helps as well. Um, this, I wanted to just show you, this is how GoToWebinar looks. So you're going to get a panel over on this right hand side where you can function between attendees, the dashboard, check the audio, you can launch polls. So everything, and I just took these screenshots for you, you would be seeing the PowerPoint that the presenter's using on the left side of the screen. And on the right side of the screen, you would be seeing uh, various activity. It's kind of interesting, you know, and I can share files here. You can do that in Zoom as well, share, share web addresses. You can mute attendees. You can uh, have them raise their hand. A lot of functionality with GoToWebinar. And then the questions, you can pop the question box out as I've done before, and then you can monitor the questions as they're going through. So uh, just wanted to give you a couple of ideas. You might want to get a banner like I have behind me. You can order those fairly reasonable, but put your company logo or your brand on there. You can see right here, I have a phone holder. Someone asked about cameras. I do a lot of my webinars right from my iPhone. And then uh, I have a little light so that it's kind of, I'm lit up. And uh, my daughter's told me, Dad, this is the same light that Kim Kardashian uses. So it just <laughs> wasn't that much, but it works pretty good. And uh, actually, mine was $32. I think that was $100. So I, I would only buy the $30 one. This is a really good microphone here from that I do a lot of podcasting on. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's uh, I can move it over and around. But in all honesty, what Wayne and I are using, if you have some even some older, um, the older um, iPhone earbuds. or your earbuds, they work great. So there's nothing wrong with that. I use my iPad pencil a lot with my global real estate school I'm writing. And so I use this app called Reflector and they actually have a new one out called Reflector Teacher that's kind of neat. But with Reflector, I can stream my iPad over to my computer screen and I can actually write on it. So I prefer rather than using Zoom's um, annotation tools just to reflect my iPad over to my computer screen and then I can use my Apple Pencil and I can write notes and, and uh, use it like a flip chart. So as people have questions, you can, you can bring those up as well. So those are just a few things that I wanted to share. Um, I do have another, uh, you saw that. So, but um, as Wayne pointed out, I mean, this is probably the way we are going to have to conduct business for the next few weeks or a little, little longer. I want you to know, and I've shared this story, I've spent a lot of time in France. I've literally sold properties in France by using GoToWebinar, showing plats. Uh, it was always land. I didn't sell any. I did sell one house to someone, but I had someone on the ground that showed the house for me, but had a few people that I showed land. I showed them the plats. We talked by just like we're doing here they went out and looked at the land because it was unimproved farmland. And then we did another online meeting. I did the DocuSign contracts, ordered the title insurance. Uh, everybody lived out of state anyway. And so it all functioned fine. And the title company wired the funds to my bank and, and my buyers and sellers both knew I was in France and no one was unhappy. And it's just the way we can do business today. But, you know, my daughter's a hospice nurse, and one of the things she's doing now is because the family can't come in to visit their patients is my daughter is actually 
face timing and I don't want to get choked up, but she's telling me some of the stories and it just, it just would grip your heart, but she's, uh, she's FaceTiming with family members so that they can see their loved ones. And, uh, but it's really neat the way technology can work for us today. John, there's a question here about what kind of camera would you recommend? I use a Logitech. Um, I can't even see the model number yeah. here. HD Logitech. That's uh, the one I use. And you know, usually if you go on Amazon and look for the products that have good ratings, I mean, I, you just can't go wrong with, but I use the same Logitech. It's a great camera. Yeah. And it's inexpensive and easy to you plug it in and it works. All right. Well, we're uh, about six minutes short of our hour. Uh, are there any other questions? I think we've answered most of them. Let's see. Tracy, the safety lady, would you recommend for starters based on the ease and, Ill and ability to interact? Uh, I'm, I'm a Zoom guy. Uh, John, I'll tell you, go to webinar is easier to use. Now, I will tell you this. If you go to the go to webinar site and take what's a, the seven day free trial, they have a 50 minute tutorial on there that you can click on and watch for free. And it takes you through the entire thing at a much greater depth than we have time to. And I don't think there's any reason for us to try and recreate that, but it'll tell you all about go to webinar, everything you can do, everything you can't do. Uh, Zoom also has videos available to, to um, teach you how to use it. For me, it's Zoom. Yeah. And I love Zoom. I just like to do a lot of interactivity. Now today at four o'clock, and this is free, I'm going to be uh, doing live streaming for my real estate school. And if you, I'd love for you to just jump on to see, because I use a totally different program for that. And it functions through YouTube and you'll be able to see how I do a lot of really, I'm able to do a lot of really cool things. I use a program called Switcher Studio and it streams to YouTube for free. Would you so type that in the chat box, John? Yeah. So Switcher Studio is actually, it's 29, whoops, let's see. I need to, I need to quit sharing my screen. Sorry about that. Um, it is, I'll, I'll type that down here. It's, Twenty nine ninety five, but if you have a if you have a Gmail account or a Google account or YouTube, you have a free television channel on YouTube. And what I like about the, that platform is that it records for me automatically and puts it right on my YouTube channel. I can mark it public or private, and I do so much through Switcher Studio and YouTube. I still use Zoom because I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one with my clients and customers, but uh, I'm going to type that in. Do but that. There's so tell, many... us how, tell us how, uh, if, if we're interested, how we can jump on your four o'clock broadcast. Yeah. So go to, uh, let's see, I need to put that to panelists and all attendees. Yeah, put that uh, in the chat go, box too. And this is a good example of how I used a domain name. It's called help me pass the real estate exam. <laughs> uh, the real estate exam.com. Just go there at four o'clock today and I'll log in and you'll get to see how Switcher Studio works. It is so easy to use and it's, it, you, I use my phone and my iPad, my computer, but, um, and you don't have to stay on for the whole session, but just would love for you on the first five or 10 minutes, I'll show you some of the interesting things you can do. You can run video through it. You can have overlays with your name. Um, it's really an amazing tool and I, it's so easy to use. So, but there's so, as Wayne said earlier, there's a lot of programs out there. Try the free version, play around with it. But I think you'll find corresponding with clients and customers, working with team members, having office meetings. It's really, uh, they're great, great vehicles for us today. Well, all right, John, we're just about at the hour. Everybody, thank you for being here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it worth your time. I hope that you will attempt to do some webinars on your own and 
See, we've got somebody raise their hand here. Let's see. And I will say one last, just one last item. Probably Zoom, Wayne. I do a lot. I've done a lot of webinars with people all over the world. Zoom's by far the more, the most clearest and clearest sounding, and no, no problems with um, issues Steve, with with audio or anything. Steve Kenny wants to know where Missouri Realtors can go to refer back to this webinar. I will download this webinar and then send a link um, to um, Kim so that, uh, that, that you have it available to, to show. I'll do, I'll do that. It takes a while. It takes a while. This is recorded on the cloud. It takes a while for that then to become available to me. But as soon as it's available to me, I will get it on to Kim. Does that answer your question? I hope. Well, I've enjoyed it. Thank you for attending. Thank um, you. We will, um, I'm going to sign off now or quit the, stop the recording. We're done.